How you doing? Um, today I'm going to be covering what I think is my number one, my go-to GM resource. Um, it's always the first thing in my bag. I've had it close to me for you know, ever since I found it. I adore it, and it's dirt cheap. And that thing is Maze Rats. Um, lots of people don't know about it. It's a game by a guy called Ben Milton, which loads of people do know, um, who is, runs a Questing Beast blog. And um, we're not going to talk about the game itself. Uh, the game is only two pages. The red, we're going to talk about all the resources that's in here, how I use it, and why I think you should get it. So um, just before we go into that, a couple of quick things. Um, first off, I might be pausing this video a few times. I'm just recovering from COVID, and um, I'm coughing all the time. So um, if I'm going to get through this, it might take a couple of pauses. Second of all, really exciting, ex <clears throat> really exciting news. We did a video, or I did a video on Black Marsh, which everybody seemed to love. It went nuts. The guy who wrote is a guy called Rob Connolly. Uh, um, Rob is um, is epic, and he I'm going to actually be interviewing him tomorrow and just grilling him about world building and Black Marsh and how he built it and a set of blog posts he's done on the Kickstarter. It's going to be super, super cool. So tune in. That will probably be out next week. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested in world building and you enjoy Black Marsh, um, make sure you're subscribed so you can uh, um, get notification when that one comes out. So back to Maze Rats. Well, in fact, let's just jump straight in here. So, um, right, the first two pages of here is, is the game itself. I've had a lot of fun playing the game. It's a 2D6 game. We actually run um, Hot Spring Island with it. Uh, there's a hack of Maze Rats by a guy called Dreaming Dragon Slayer, which I'll probably put the link below somewhere. Um, <clears throat> and it was a lot of fun. Um, but we're not going to talk about the game at all today. We're just going to jump straight into why I think it's an amazing resource. So one of the things Maze Rats doesn't have is a fixed magic system. Uh, you just roll the magic spells each day. Now, that means you have a bunch of spells here that you get to roll on. First off, uh, the entire book has these six, six tables in. So you can see there's six uh, separate tables of six um, items each. So what you do is you roll, let me grab this. You roll, and two, four would say the second table and the fourth one down, which would be duplicating. So the way it would work in this is in order to create magic items, you would literally um, roll here. So two four would get, say that you would roll uh, on the physical um, physical effect and the physical uh, ethereal form. You would roll physical effect, which would be six two shape shifting uh, ethereal form one two shape shifting beacon, and then you would make agree with the GM what the spell is, which is seriously cool, but. <clears throat> These tables you can keep on coming back to again and again and mixing them with other tables here to create unique magic items, unique monsters, unique curses. Um, it, it's almost unlimited what you can do when you start to let your imagination go. Now, another cool thing this, these tables have is, so here's a table of mutations. If you see something in bold, um, it means that there's another table somewhere in this book that you can then reference to get that. So animal legs would essentially mean you would roll something here and four five, um, four five, you would have rabbit legs. That's an interesting curse. Um, so yeah, uh, there's insanities here, which you can get and omens. Again, this is just a magic section, but this is just the first run of it. Where it gets interesting is when you start to get through these other tables. <clears throat> now I sat on the plane on the way home, just with this and a couple of D6s making up some stuff. And I'll share some of the stuff that I actually made up as I was going along. Um, so here we go. Uh, yeah, so monsters. <coughs> what you can do is you combine these two monsters. So you can combine something like a, um, uh, I don't know, a um, octopus and a wasp. And you could create something that would be, well, actually, picture that a second. A flying wasp that has tentacles for grabbing people. Um, and when it grabs them up, it pulls them into a beak, which it then starts to devour them. The implications of that <clears throat> as a technical monster is, is amazing because it's gonna take, try and take people, it's gonna have a go to take them 10 foot above, so they're gonna get floor damage if the thing gets killed anyhow, falling damage. Um, there's so many things you can do just with those two ideas to create in seconds, amazingly unique monster your players have never seen before. But this goes one step further. It also gives you features that you can add on to stuff, monster traits, um, abilities that the monster might have, tactics, personalities. 
So you can create actually in-depth layered monsters, which is amazing. And what you can also do is you can take a standard monster. I always go back to Goblin because everybody knows Goblin. And you can combine it with something like here. Um, you could have <clears throat> a scaled Goblin. Or a Goblin with a Stinger. Or, you know, you, you get to add more and more stuff. Or, or you can have Goblins that have a particular tactic that they like. Um, so you can take standard stuff and add layers onto it as well, which is really, really cool. That was the first pause. So, um, yeah, and then you can actually take monsters and then start to pop back to this table with the magical effects and start combining stuff with this. So, with this, if we uh, we roll something different, a uh, one four. So a blossoming blinding. Okay, so I'm going to go with blinding. I I would what I would tend to do with these tables is I use them just as spark tables. So I might roll one four and I might have a look at physical effects and go table one number four. I might go table four, number one, <clears throat> which will give us a levitate in, or just look at another table. But we went with blinding. So if you combined a monster that has the ability to blind you, um, so all of a sudden, things get very, very interesting. Um, so goose, that would be interesting, a blinding goose. But... Anyhow, you get the picture of this. You can develop monsters with layers and layers and layers of stuff that's unique or take monsters that you already know and make them amazingly unique. Bamboozle your players with new challenges that they've not had before, which is super cool. Um, so <clears throat> what else have we got? Next table. Characters. Ever had issues creating NPCs? You don't anymore. This has names. Now, I've created a video based off this. Um, we can create almost unlimited NPC names that will probably be linked up here somewhere. But within here, you can create the names, you can create um, backgrounds. So again, if you're running old swords and you want some extra backgrounds, there's like 336 tables. So it's over, over uh, 100 different um, backgrounds that you can bring into the game. But you've got assets, you've got uh, goals for them, you've got missions that they might send you on. And... Um, when you go to the next page, you also have more details about what they might look like, their reputations, things that might be wrong with them, um, <clears throat> who uh, relationships they might have with other NPCs. So you can create really in-depth stuff here. And again, this is just enough to get your brain kind of adding the stuff together, which is why I really like. I'm a big fan of stuff that is minimal in the sense of stuff that's inspirational, but doesn't give you all the answers and lets your brain figure out the rest, F fill out the kind of gaps, which is when, well, when my brain works at its best. So... I created a character again. This was just sitting on the plane with a, a little glass with 2D6 in it, shaking it. Uh, a musician called Daramus Wexley, um, who is very charming and has huge debts. He wants to acquire an item, which is a Nonix bowl, um, because he's been defrauded of it. Uh, it's uh, actually, he, he's going to employ you to steal the bowl, the bowl, um, and he's going to provide you with a map for the mansion of the mayor who's taken it, um, and including the combination of the safe. And you can take everything else that's in the safe. A few rolls on tables, you've now got a mission for an entire session and something interesting. And again, this is just random rolls, but once you're actually applying this into a setting that you already know, it becomes even more powerful. So it's really, really cool for that. <clears throat> this now is probably my favorite table, is the treasures. So immediately it has a bunch of items there, which is okay. But when you start combining it, you start getting more interesting items. So you might have a... Um, a glass eye um, and if we roll here uh, three six uh, an ivory glass eye that's kind of cool now glass eye made out of ivory um, it's completely white <clears throat> maybe it's a magic item if it's a magic item let me roll on this again four one I'm gonna jump back to the magic table and I'm gonna have a look at a few of these um, levitating is one that's popped up again excruciating um moss horn gaze plague so yeah right so this is a uh, a glass eye that when you put it in um if you stare at something it can cause excruciating pain for d6 rounds now what i would probably do is make it more interesting is say you're rolling a d6 on a one that's going to impact you so all of a sudden now <clears throat> you have an item that could be a game changer in a battle People aren't going to overuse it because they're worried that it could actually knock them out of the battle. A couple of tables, interesting, unique item. 
And with this, then you, you can apply that kind of principle to tools, to weapons, to uh, potions, um, treasure items, and you can come up with almost an infinite number of interesting items. Now, the way that I would have used this is we actually use this live at the table. So we were running an open table game, and when somebody found treasure, that we would say there was a, a bag of treasure, but it's too busy for them to get it out. At the end of the game, we'd roll to find out what they found. <clears throat> now, when I say we, I mean the players would roll to find out what treasure they've got. So I'd say X amount of D10 would be your gold, and this would be your silver. So they would roll, count it up, and they felt part of that process. But then I'd also say maybe roll a... Um, Roll a d20, and if it's hard, which is over 16 in old swords, there's a magic item. So they reach into the table and pull out a magic item. And then I would say you roll on one of these tables, so maybe a d6, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a treasure item. They would roll, <clears throat> and what they've pulled out of there was uh, a fine liqueur. And if it was a magic item, um, what you could probably do then is then roll on one of these tables. And you'd come up with the players of what the actual magic item were. And we came up with amazingly unique items. And people looked forward to that end of game so much because they never knew. It was like a lottery. It was excitement. It was people want to roll. And having them be part of that process was brilliant. We didn't just use this. We also used... Hold on. We also used these two. Um, and, and there's a magic item book there, which we've got there, which is uh, Table Fables by Madeline Howe, which are brilliant random table books as well so yeah they're really really cool um so yeah this gives you an infinite amount of treasures that you can roll um now moving on we because there's so much in this tiny little book so cities uh you can create towns you can create buildings you can create uh factions and their goals and all kinds of stuff like that um i'm not gonna roll all this stuff live uh, but to give you an idea i rolled on the plane um piracy conscription uh education religion duel uh, and a few other things, and I came up with a small coastal town who believe piracy is the way forward. Uh, salutation, yeah, salutation. They worship a dead pirate who's called Redmond Culpepper. There's a college of piracy within this town, um, and that's led by a guy called Leopold Wexley, who smuggles goods for the Exporters Club. Now, the Exporters Club are hunted, and again, this was all stuff ro rolled randomly from here, um, and they're hunted due to the fact of heresy. Um, because they believe that piracy isn't the way forward. What they should be doing is actually trading and mapping the area locally. You've now got a really odd, unique town in next to no time that you can run off. Um, you've got the same thing with wilds. There is a video that was been done by uh, Baron de Rock um, that kind of uses these tables to create a hex crawl. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here, but it's the exact same thing. You can create a wilderness with unique stuff that you can mix with the magic tables, <clears throat> you can mix with the NPCs, and you can create entire hex crawls out of these tables put together. There's also a nice little way for making up an inn. So um, what have we got here? One four is uh, one four and two five. So one four is um, blessed, and two five is um, blessed, two five, the blessed dragon. Or you can do the um, uh, one for the bell and dragon. So you have different options that you can do one on one or, or both of these and put them together. And there's quirks for the inns. So there's other cool stuff you can create there. <clears throat> Maze. It gives you an entire set of tables where you can create mazes or create dungeons. Now, I'm not going to go into massive detail here, but I think what I might do in a future video is I might take a Dyson map and actually create a one page dungeon, which I then publish just based off using these tables to show how powerful they are. Um, now, on top of that, when you get to the bottom, you've got GM advice. The GM advice in this book is amazing. It's really simple. It runs the kind of game that I want, which is this old, old kind of old school or OSR style mentality of a game. Um, it got, it's got great advice for running sessions, for preparing, for building the worlds, for bringing it to life. Overall, this thing is four, $4.99. I'm putting it in the free D&D section because it's practically free. You can get these tables online already on some of the rolling things. Ben's released it as Creative Commons, which is amazing. And like, literally, this thing is, um, it's, it's fantastic. I, I, I couldn't speak about it more. I, yeah, I love it a bit. So get Maze Rats um, and enjoy the creativity it will put out. 
you enjoyed this video there's probably some more videos uh, here that you might like hopefully and um remember that i'm going to be doing this interview with rob conley so uh, if you're interested in world building I'm, I'm, I'm new at this but if you're interested in world building make sure that you subscribe and hit that location location uh, you know what i mean um so you can actually find out what's going on all right take care and i'll catch you in the next one bye